You're listening to Articulate with your hosts, Kevin Kramer and Sean Gillespie, your go-to guys for art tips, techniques, and general artist ramblings. Presented by DrawingAndColoring.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Articulate, the podcast where we talk about everything art. And this week, we have a special little treat for you. Hey! <laughs> that sounds like an interview. And is that an interview? I think it is an interview. Oh, wow. And Who are doing? Or, or should I say, are you interviewing? Because this one, we're going to give it all to the K-Dog. He's yeah, well, I didn't want to yeah. gang up on the on the first person we're interviewing. So. Thanks. So tell us a little bit about the person you're interviewing today, Kevin. The person I'm talking to today was Cindy DeBold. She is actually the creator of the Composite Grid System which mm-hmm. is actually really useful. And if, uh, let me see, I might have one up here. Oh, oh. Yeah, look at that. That's yeah. one of them, if you can see that. I can't see that. I don't know what that is. What is that? That is one of the products that she has. It's a grid, which you basically draw, you hold it up, and then you draw the outline of whatever is in front of it through the grid. It's basically like a, like a new age Durer grid. Oh, okay, so it just breaks it down. What You hold it up and you look through it, like, and yeah. like, your subject is there, and it just breaks down the proportions for you, yeah. kind of like people hold up their pencil or their thumb? Exactly, exactly awesome. like that. And there. they have them in bigger sizes. This is just the first one I could grab. But yeah. Give me a life-size one. Some yeah. Days. <laughs> yes. Well, very cool, man. Well, I look forward to hearing this interview. Yeah, and I look forward to playing it for you. So uh, <laughs> without further ado, here it is. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the call. This is Kevin Kramer, and I have a very special guest with us today. Uh, She's been an artist for over 20 years, lived all over the country, has works in several museums, and a member of many art associations throughout Texas, and just a really great artist that I'm really proud to have on the call today. And uh, her name is Cindy DeBold. Cindy? Hi, Kevin. How are you? <laughs> good, good. How are you doing? Pretty good. All right. So I guess what uh, we wanted to kind of start off with is uh, what what was, where did you start? What is the kind of the background or uh, do you have any kind of formal training or did you just kind of start on your own? Well, I decided I wanted to be an artist when I was eight years old and then always took art classes and then went to art school in, in California. And when I moved to Texas about 25 years ago, I didn't know what medium I wanted to work in and I kind of discovered sculpture. And so I did sculpture for 20 years and on a trip to Hawaii, I was noticing all the beautiful landscapes and colors, and I realized I couldn't sculpt color, so I decided to start painting, and when I started painting, we were in San Miguel, Mexico for about three months, and we were taking some classes, and I wanted to do a painting of... We were on a second floor looking down into a courtyard with a fountain with all the arched buildings or the archways, and it just seemed too confusing to put that on my my canvas. Mm -hmm. And so as I was staring at it, I realized or I came up with an idea to make it a lot simpler, and so I went and I got the parts and I came back and and drew a proportional grid on a on a clear piece of plastic and and then I was able to to do the drawing and then transfer it to my canvas really fast okay. and when I was visiting actually after we came back to Austin I was taking a class and I took one of my proportional grids to the class and the instructor said that um, she thought it was a great idea and I should patent it and until then I didn't realize that it was anything special and then I went uh, on the internet to try to see if there was anything like it and I couldn't find anything and eventually I did patent it. 
Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. So, going back to uh, the the training in the school, just so we can get a, a little bit of context. Mm-hmm. Were you? Did you kind of you start off with sculpture, or did you already know that you wanted to do sculpture, or uh, was it more of a visual medium of painting that you wanted to go in before, or is it? What, I kind of, just to get a little bit more background of what was the the main drive that you uh, had for doing art? Well, when I was eight years old, I liked just drawing. Mm-hmm. And um, the teachers usually gave me a choice of I could do like a, a term paper project, either I could draw something or I could write something. And I usually chose to draw something. Okay. And, and I, I liked kind of all different art medias. And, but when I was in high school, I only did one sculpture and never really did another one until I moved to Austin. Okay. Um, okay. But before then, I, I studied illustration in in college and so the drawing aspect of it was really more of the the starting point or the driving factor that you were interested in at the beginning yes until I moved to Austin and then didn't know which medium to go into and and took a sculpture class and kind of fell in love with the sculpture okay okay good deal yeah I actually I have a, a cousin in New Mexico that I recently found that does sculpture and he he says it was it was interesting when i was talking to him that he felt more comfortable sculpting out when he went to a sketching class instead of actually sketching out a drawing mhm and he sa- he said he felt more familiar using the clay to sketch and make a 3d object and he could do that faster than actually sketching and he mm-hmm. was he was surprised that I how how proficient I was with sketching it was just mm-hmm. it was a very it was a shift that I had never heard before mm-hmm. yeah it's interesting I have done sketching and well with um, I guess drawing or pencil or or paint and and I've also done sketches in clay mm-hmm. and um, I actually like doing them both they're both real different <laughs> yeah I bet uh, I've, I've actually, I've done a little bit of sculpting in my day, mostly in, um, it was in middle school, I did a, a Mount Rushmore clay mm-hmm. uh, sculpture that came out actually surprisingly good, but mm-hmm. the the drawing factor more was more of where I leaned to, mm-hmm. uh, couldn't, um, all this sculpture was very interesting. I was just, mm-hmm. I was just trying to see what, uh, what was that main shift that you, that really got you to go from drawing to that other medium it was just you just started using it well I guess the first class I took was a bronze making class which is kind of starting at the end in some ways as far as sculpture goes yeah but my very first sculpture was an abstract piece Hmm. kind of two stick figures and um, it's still one of my favorite pieces. And, and then the very next sculpture, I did a realistic um, sculpture. And I like that one a lot, too. And I've actually sold a lot of that one. I even sold one just recently. Oh, wow. A lot of my pieces I make molds of mm-hmm. and castings of them. Well, for one reason is that way I can sell them for less if it takes me a long time to make it and also I can always keep one for myself right and so since I started sculpting I've done both realistic and abstract and even since I started painting I like doing abstract painting and I like doing realistic painting too right right I've seen some of your your landscape paintings they're they're actually they're they're really beautiful they're vibrant and they're Mm -hmm. very full of color uh, mm-hmm. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about um, what are do you have any kind of influences influences that really kind of uh, uh, directed your style or is there anything mm-hmm. specific that 
brought that kind of um, that imagery to to you? Well, I guess when I was in high school, I really liked I did more drawing. Mm-hmm. And I was probably more influenced by the drawings of like Leonardo da Vinci and more classical, traditional. Right, right. But then when I was in college, I really started doing more painting. And I, my two favorite artists then and still today is Van Gogh and Matisse. Okay. And, yeah. um, okay. I could definitely, I could definitely see that in your, in your paintings. So. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks. <laughs> and by the way, anyone listening, if you want to check out any of uh, Cindy's artwork or sculptures, you can go to her website at cindydebold.com, and she has a list of sculptures and paintings. And uh, yeah, you can go ahead and check those out. They're, they're, very. Very, very good. You should definitely take a look at them. Mm, thank you. All right. So, with the you mentioned the um, the grids that you 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 when you started drawing when you went to painting initially you started drawing and you wanted to make some you wanted to make sure the proportions were correct and you you defi- you devised some sort of uh, grid that you could draw on. Mm-hmm. In was it just more of a convenience factor, or how did you come about doing that? Can you reword that question? <laughs> sure, sure thing. Um, what was the main motivation to create the uh, the grids that you that you have and that you sell today? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess originally, like I said earlier, was when. I saw a scene and it just was kind of difficult for me to draw it and the reason I kept using them is because I realized it was a lot faster to compose that way because you could move, because the grid has a border on it and it's in the same proportion as whatever the final canvas or drawing would be, you can move the, the grid around and frame it or frame your scene and then you um, use a dry erase marker and you sketch the, the scene or kind of trace it in a way onto the, the proportional grid mm-hmm. and then you can transfer, transfer your sketch real quickly to your canvas by drawing the same type of lines. If, you, if your grid has, it's divided into nine rectangles, then you put, you make a nine grid rectangle on your canvas. Mm-hmm. If it's a 16 grid rectangle, then in some ways those are easier to do because you just start with a dot in the middle and then you divide from the dot to the edge in the middle and from the dot to the edge until you have it 16 dots there and then you just use the the first some I don't always start at the first corner but sometimes it's the easiest Mm -hmm. you start at the first rectangle from your grid and whatever lines are drawn there you just transfer it to the first rectangle in your canvas and I usually use a colored chalk to to put the drawing on the canvas so that when I paint it the chalk just disappears and it's like if there were no lines. Okay. And okay. usually the, the the sketch is very simple. The more complicated it is, the harder it is to transfer. Right. Usually after I get the sketch to the canvas, then I actually look at either the scene if I'm doing plein air wherever I'm at mm-hmm. or if I'm using a photograph, then I look at the photograph and do the rest of the painting from the photograph. Um, I don't use. I only use the grid for the initial sketch. Okay. Okay. So it's it's basically a, a new age twist on an old world type of uh, a technique that I actually right. it's, use. It's a lot kind myself. of a it's a it's a low tech, quick way to to draw. Yeah. Yeah. And that, it's it's definitely with the. Um, well, I was searching on the internet and I came across this. That was one of the the things that I teach to the 
to my viewers and things like that is to get perfect proportions one of the easiest methods is using the the grid method and this really kind of fits that perfectly and it's portable and it's very versatile more so because you can just pick it up and draw or erase and then just redraw the scene and there's no measurements or anything else and it really that's that's really what brought my attention to it uh, while I was searching for some kind of you know some just something for my viewers that would help them out to get the proportions down because I know when you're going through and measuring and trying to draw out the grids on the paper it the uh, it can get a little if you if you're not really a, a big math whiz it can get a little hard and a little difficult to go through and I, I I've thought that these were just really uh, a really good way to 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 do that without having to calculate or do all these math and mm -hmm. You have all these different sizes of the grids too, which make it even a lot easier too. So I, I just, I thought that would, I thought those were just really neat. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I made them in all the proportions that, or most of the proportions that you find in an art store. I went to a couple art stores and and um, and wrote down most of the sizes of all the canvases, and then picked the ones that were used the most, and made uh, proportional grids. For each one and I use them a lot I, I use it the most popular ones seem to be the the three four proportion mm -hmm. um, because that's a 9 by 12 I guess 9 by 12 canvases are used a lot the 18 by 24 are used a lot right right there's a lot of others but that's the one that the three four grids uh, sell the most and there's um, the larger one is eight by ten inches, and the smaller one is four by five inches. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, they're and like I said, they're in, they cover just about every size for every transition to a bigger surface that the the that you can think of. They're just the easiest. They're already set, like you said. From I have this one, and it's going to easily translate to all of these pre-made size canvases or paper or anything. And then it just simplifies the whole process for creating the artwork and then putting it down onto the canvas to translate and then creating it and framing it and possibly selling it. It almost it streamlines almost the entire process of your artwork, whether you want to get the proportions correct and just for the sake of getting them right so you can practice or to streamline a uh, more of a uh, commercial aspect of selling your work to more sizes that are more readily available for framing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also put a lot of the canvas sizes on each proportional grid. So uh, for some artists that don't like to do math, they can just look at the grid and they can tell what canvases they can use it with. Right, right. Um, it saves time and there's one grid that there's six in one proportions on it. They're smaller, but if anyway, it works well, especially for, for plein air or actually even using, if you're using smaller photographs that have the smaller grid. Okay, so you would actually put those directly on top of the photograph and uh, just draw or kind of just go over it like that as well? Right. Yeah. And it like, has a square proportion in the 4x5, which is, I guess, the most common 4x5 proportion is a 16x20 canvas. Yeah, yeah. And it's because it's almost like um, I am a very big fan of Chuck Close's work. Mm -hmm. And he uses grids ex pretty much exclusively in all kinds of different ways. Mm -hmm. And I've studied his method, and it it's like I have I take my photo, I do a, I put it onto a mat board, and then I take the clear acetate, which would basically mm -hmm. be like your grid, mm -hmm. and then I have to measure out and draw the grid on top of it. Mm -hmm. And these actually kind of just take that step out of it and make it a lot simpler yeah it just saves time yeah i first did grids a long time ago 
most all the grids were like one inch. But so you basically you needed a ruler and then, you know, measure it all across. Right, right. Um, yeah, the- and so these proportional ones, let's see, I guess uh, the proportional ones, usually they're pretty simple grids, especially the one where you just put the dot in the middle. Mm-hmm. Because it's easy to just divide it in half. You can do it visually. Although some artists I've noticed probably should use a ruler because they're not very good at getting their rectangles yeah. close. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's definitely one of the the challenges of gridding itself. That's why mm-hmm. I was that's why these standardized sizes are perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I do have one one more question before we wrap this up, and it's going to be more of a kind of a, a personal art question. And, okay. And that is, if you had to choose one key distinction that took your artwork to the next level, thinking back, what what would it be? Hmm. Okay, reword that again. If there was one thing that stood out the most to you throughout your art career that really was a determining factor that got it to the next the next level, what what would that one thing be that you could think of? I can't think of one thing. <laughs> no. But one thing that I've really learned a lot from uh, over the years is taking workshops. Mm -hmm. with different artists. I've always learned so much from the workshops and I've done both sculpture workshops and painting workshops and I try to do at least a couple of each a year. Mm -hmm. And um, Do you have any that you could recommend to the people listening? Hmm. Well, I guess it depends what they want to do. Well, uh, more of the people that listen to uh, to my things are going to be more visual kind of uh, drawing type. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of uh, visual type of... Well, the visual ones... I mean, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain is a book. It's not a class. Well, actually, there are some people that teach classes in it. Right, Um, right. I have actually seen those, I think. mm -hmm. But that book is really good, and actually doing the exercise in it exercises in it is very helpful. Mm-hmm. I think they actually have a workbook too now that goes along with it that has mm-hmm. a lot more exercises too. Mm-hmm. I mean that's really good. I mean the drawing upside down is really amazing. It, it really helps switch I guess left brain dominant person to the right brain. Eventually I guess most artists eventually get to the point where they can switch to the right side of the brain faster because it's easier to draw when you're using that side. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely know that I whenever I get in the zone, I can f- I I can feel it. It's a it's a weird kind of uh shift in your in your brain that you can just you can feel when you're in the zone. It's, it's mm-hmm. very interesting. It's almost like meditation. Yeah, it actually uh, is. That's a that's a good I, analogy. Artists enjoy doing art because it is very meditative Mm -hmm. and so it's real relaxing uh when you get in that zone okay so the so the the main thing that you you're saying is to get around basically other artists in live environments and just kind of exchange ideas and just kind of get into the into the scene Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think that's the best that I've well I could recommend there's some plein air groups around that actually get together and some paint and some draw Mm -hmm. and it it encourages or they they're able to encourage each other to to do it and those are fun and plus it's it's really great getting outside it's just fun seeing other people's work and them working it and usually you learn things too yeah I, I i totally agree everything that i know today has been accelerated by other great artists that have been surrounded by me and uh, mm. i almost every technique i know has been some kind of tool or tip that i've gotten from a fellow artist that was drawing right next to me that i'd had not even considered at one point mm. Well, okay. I think that'll wrap it up for us on this one. And if you're interested, you can 
check out Cindy's grids. They're called Composite Grids. And you can actually check them out on Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama, I believe. Or you can uh, click the link below this audio and check them out there. I highly recommend them. They are they will simplify and streamline your proportions and drawing for anything that you want to get onto another larger surface or just to practice with. So, Cindy, thank you again. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, be on the call with us today. And y'all have a, a great day. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you. Till next time. <laughs> I really enjoy your your videos. Ah, thank you. All right. Y'all have a good day. You've been listening to Articulate with Kevin and Sean. Subscribe on iTunes or check them out on drawingandcoloring.com. Always reminding you to keep it simple.